Baldur's ruins lives. Well, that's Sandra to your video. This is not the Baldur's video. <laughs> well, we'll cut this, and in two weeks, we'll put it in the Baldur's video. <laughs> Wait, this has to be the intro of this video, and then that's... <laughs> and we're just gonna repeat it in the Baldur's... Okay, great. We'll just put this as the intro to every video from now. <laughs> Imagine being a medium-sized creature in a gargantuan world. All around you every day, you fear being squashed, trampled, and forgotten about. At any moment, your place of living could be in danger or be nothing more than a bug squashed underneath the foot of a creature who never even knew that you were there. You are insignificant, unimportant, not even an afterthought to this monolithic monster's gaze. And then, as it begins to lumber past your destroyed home and you look up in a horrified awe, it turns back. As you watch this massive creature walk past, it stares at you. It notices you. And in that single moment, you suddenly realize there is something far more terrifying than being a creature in a world of monsters that don't know that you exist. No, there's something far worse. You could be a creature that they think is a threat, and now they notice you. You know what I don't think gets used enough? Gargantuan creatures, or creature size in general, honestly. Now, don't get me wrong, I am certain that you have obviously used these creatures in your games before. I mean, it's kind of baked into the core mechanics of combat in D&D 5e. Size is very important. You have your small creatures, you have your tiny creatures, your medium, your large, your huge, but then there is your gargantuan. And you know what? Yeah, honestly, I understand that. Mechanically, it's very obvious to see what gargantuan creatures are going to do in your game. The larger the size, the more tiles you take up on the battlefield. At the end of the day, that's pretty much all that size does. Unless, of course, you're using Theater of the Mind. In which case, well, that's kind of its own separate thing, and I do want to get into that here. Because, see, there are very few things that I'm afraid of in this world. And that might come out of nowhere, but I promise it's related to what I'm talking about. I actually do not have any irrational fears or phobias, as many people would refer to them. But I do actually have two things that I genuinely fear regardless of the circumstance. And they might be things that most people wouldn't expect. The first one is ants. I hate ants. But then there's the other fear that I have. And it's something that I don't typically talk about, but it is very unique to this video because the thing that I am so uniquely afraid of is kaiju. Massive creatures, giant creatures. Think things like King Kong or Godzilla. Creatures that literally couldn't exist because the laws of gravity wouldn't allow it, but are still terrifying. And you know what? I'll be honest, there is probably a reason for this. Godzilla was something that me and my dad loved when I was younger. We would watch all of the movies, and to be 100% honest, I probably should not have been watching those movies for as young as I was. Corny as they may be nowadays, back then they were kind of terrifying. But that's probably what led to me being so afraid of kaiju, Godzilla specifically. I would often have nightmares, honestly, of these looming massive creatures going through an entire city. And I was the only person left in that city, the only person who was unable to get out in time, to evacuate. And so I had to stay hidden as massive, impossibly large creatures crushed everything in their path, searching for just me, only me. And those of you who are following along probably get where I'm going with this. The opening narration of this video recounting all of that terrifying environments was actually a nightmare that I've had many times in the past. It has terrified me, and it led me to realize that gargantuan creatures are something that are massively overlooked in D&D. How could you hide from something that could cross miles in just a few steps? How could you possibly avoid something so massive? And I distinctly remember that recurring nightmare and it's something that has stuck in my head so much and made me realize that there is a incredible encounter design in D&D that has not been utilized much in many of the games that I've seen or the games that I've run. Imagine seeing this massive creature and then it leans down while you're in this multi-story building and this giant eye looks through the window and looks at you. The concept is genuinely horrifying, terrifying, and it makes me realize that there are some of the most terrifying things in D&D if you just consider creature size. 
See, a lot of the time, I honestly see people refer to gargantuan creatures as a disappointment because of their stat blocks. And just referring to creatures as their stat blocks is a mistake in its own right, but it is somewhat understandable as it's what the designers provide to you. Many times we've heard this argument that a Tarrasque, one of the largest creatures in D&D, is not actually that scary of an enemy. It's just a big, giant beast, and it can't actually move that fast. Theoretically, in fact, you can just go fast enough and use acid damage and it won't ever be able to get you and you can slowly kill it no matter how many rounds you go through. Honestly, yeah, if you're just describing it as only that, as only the mechanics, of course it's not gonna be a terrifying or intense threat. Many people try to revamp the Tarrasque because of this. They try to take the stat block and change it, but I honestly don't think that's necessary so long as you keep something in mind. Because the truth is, the most terrifying thing about this creature is its size. And in combat, that creature, that massive thing, is only focused on the party. Really, the descriptions that you give for the creature do it an incredible amount to set the scene. And when you just set the mini down on a combat mat, in place of actually describing what's being fought, the threat that's in front of you, I think it takes a lot of the bite away from the creature. And this is not just the Tarrasque I'm talking about, but any gargantuan creature in general. And this is where I think theater of the mind, which this is something I'm not used to saying, but I think it has a massive advantage over the battle map. I love battle maps, but the theater of the mind allows you to do something unique. It takes a combat scenario, and when you have a map in front of you and you set the mini down, a lot of the times that does legwork. You just set the mini down and that's everything that you need to describe. It shows how large it is on the map and that does pretty much most of the description for you unless you feel like adding more. But the truth is that does not force you to maintain and describe how powerful and terrifying a creature truly is. But then you take into account theater of the mind. You have no choice but to try and make it clear through only descriptions, wordplay, and the creature's actions exactly how large, exactly how terrifying, exactly how impressive this thing in front of you is. And in my mind, that's much more fascinating. I love a well-made mini as much as the next person, but giving all that there is incredible. So let's give an example. How would you describe this like I'm displaying? Well, the first thing is, if you're going to put a gargantuan creature into a scenario, you need to use that scenario that can actually use the gargantuan effectively. Now, what does that mean? Well, the thing is, gargantuan is just a term that's used in D&D to define the largest creature size. There's actually a huge variance in how large a gargantuan creature could be. It's just the upper echelon of what things could be. A gargantuan creature could be a Tarrasque or a god. And so if you take something like, well, again, the Tarrasque, like I mentioned, and just put it into a large, empty plane, it's not gonna show how big it is, and more importantly, it's not gonna show how much of a threat it is. That's not going to display the force of terror that it is. But if you put it somewhere, say, in a city, where it can move through the streets, knock down buildings, and peer around them at the players, that's a horrifying scenario. Very similar to the one that I described in the opening of this video. Or let's say it's somewhere else. Maybe your party is in a large area in the skies on a bunch of floating islands. But the Tarrasque is so massive, so large, its head peeks over the clouds and it is searching for them in the skies on those islands and they have no choice but to desperately attempt to avoid it or else suffer a horrible fate. After all, with one simple turn of its head, with one simple sound that causes it to turn its attention, it can break apart an entire island and send the party crumbling back to the earth below. They must avoid drawing its attention. See, the truth is the environment is almost as important as the size of the creature if not even more so. There is only so much you can do with it as long as you leave it in a scenario where it can't do a lot with the environment. But if you're intentionally thinking about what all is there, it makes the gargantuan creature a legitimate, terrifying, and genuine threat that the party simply can't avoid. And isn't that so much more fun? And honestly, there's still more that you can do with these types of creatures, so long as you keep certain things in mind. Because let's look at the mechanical benefit of being a gargantuan creature like I stated earlier, because there's a lot more there than just the initial words of the stat block. Honestly, gargantuan just means that you take up a lot more grids in combat if you just boil it down to the basics, right? That's pretty simple. But at the same time, it actually does do a lot because it's not just representing 
how large the creature is, it's representing the space the creature genuinely occupies. And it also shows that they have a massive range of attack. How much of the battlefield is under their control simply by their existence? Doing this by putting your characters into smaller, more confined spaces means that there is nowhere that they can go that is not going to be influenced by the massive creature there, meaning that they have no chance of actually escaping. And for spellcasters, that's terrifying. Put them in a cave system where there's only one massive pocket that the gargantuan creature can actually exist in and all the players can do is dart through smaller caves that are round trying to avoid it as it tries to grab at them with its massive claws. That's suddenly much more terrifying. They're not just fighting a giant creature, they're trying to avoid this massive claw that's reaching in to the only space they have to occupy. The idea of a massive creature searching for you and the only thing you can do to keep safe is how small and fragile you are is interesting. Your greatest weakness, being small, is your only hope of escape. And then of course there's HP. Hit points are typically assumed to be massive when it comes to our gargantuan creature. And you know what? Sure, that makes sense. But you know what I think is far more interesting? Implying that they actually don't have a lot of hit points, they're just as vulnerable as everybody else. There's just no way to actually hit them in that vulnerable space. When you are that gargantuan, that massive, your hide is going to be so thick that almost anything is not going to be able to actually get through it. You're just gonna hack at something and not be able to get anywhere. I think the Tarrasque is a lot more interesting when you assume that the reason it's immune to so much damage, it's just because it's literally so big that its hide can't be hurt. It's immune because no one can get through the skin layer to actually affect it. It's not actually that it's that immune magically to damage. And therefore, the party may have to focus not on dealing damage to it, but instead finding a way to open up a critical weak point in its hide so that they can actually damage it just as much as they would any other creature. Honestly, when I talk about this, it's very similar to that scene in Guardians of the Galaxy where Drax attempts to attack the creature from the inside. Hide is too thick to be pierced on the outside. I must cut through it from the inside. Huh? No, no, Drax! Wait a minute! Drax! What is he doing? Honestly, I think gargantuan creatures should be above the rules. At least in most scenarios, if not just some of them. Now, am I saying that they just shouldn't ever include the rules in their stat blocks? Of course not. That would be ridiculous, absurd, and frankly, really weird. However, what I am saying is that they should have unique and special rules to them. To assume that a creature that large exists in the world is incredible. And it has a lot of very interesting implications world building wise. Not only that, you also have to consider the fact that if they exist, they're going to affect the entire world. If you know anything about ecobiology or how a general ecosphere works, you know that a creature that massive is going to have huge ramifications when it comes to the local wildlife. They can't just exist. They must have some sort of actual beneficial engagement with the environment or else they will literally destroy everything around them. They will destroy their food source and they will eventually die. So if they are to exist, they either must be an abomination that is destroying the environment and therefore has probably gotten the attention of a god, or they must have a friendly relationship with the environment in which they can thrive. What I mean by this is that if a Tarrasque exists, there's probably an entire ecosphere of animals that surrounds it simply because it exists in the area. There are creatures that will inevitably feed on the parasites which exist on the Tarrasque's back. There are creatures that will inevitably be there strictly for the feces that the Tarrasque is going to leave behind. Because if you think about it, that's going to be as large of a house, if not more so. There will be creatures that exist to hunt those other creatures that will be eating the parasites and therefore you will have created an entire environment literally just because a creature of gargantuan size lives there. That kind of size implies that they have developed and shaped an entire portion of the world, making them far more interesting, far more important, and something that should really be focused on outside of just a combat encounter. What I'm trying to say is that size is not just size when it comes to these things. Unlike a medium, small, tiny, large, and huge, gargantuan implies something, well, bigger. No pun intended. 
And I think that sort of emphasis is very fun to play around with. And I hope that some of you can be inspired by that concept. So go out into the world, make it your own, and don't forget that you are beautiful bastards and I will forever mess up my intro even when it is scripted out in front of me and I'm reading it. And it's an outro. And it's still an outro. I, you know what? Just, just cut the video. Just, just end it. Yeah, we're done. Don't forget to play a role.